Hello, this is Vera, your mindset coach. Today I have the big pleasure of introducing my very special interview guest. Her name is Alicia Rutnerine and she is one of Guyana's best psychologists. She has a master's in psychology. She got it, I believe, at the University of Liverpool in the UK. And um, yeah, today we are going to speak about the topics of mental health, parenting and self-care. So I hope you do enjoy this interview. And for me, it's a very special one. Um, and I'm really looking forward to you having the chance to sing this great take. Yes, hello. Welcome to the next interview of Farbracht. I have a very special guest here today, Alicia Rutner ryan She has a Master in Psychology and works at the Psycho Psychiatric Hospital Department in Georgetown, Guyana. As you can tell from the background, we're not in Germany right now. We're actually in the Caribbean in Barbados. And I'm interviewing my sister-in-law. <laughs> Welcome, first of all. Thank you. I'm so glad that you took some time to do this interview with me. It's my pleasure. I know that you also have a blog at one of the biggest newspapers in Georgetown. Is it Kaichu yes, News, I believe? Starbrook News. Starbrook News, sorry. Starbrook, Starbrook News. News. Yes. And what is your blog called? Yes, um, actually it's a column and it's called Mind Your Health. Mind um, your health. So it, it's everything related to mental health. Mm -hmm. So each week I write about anything that's related to mental health or topics that people find interesting or maybe, you know, things that people want to talk about but they are, they, they wouldn't have the courage to come and speak with me face to face. Because mm -hmm. it's still something like a taboo? Yes. People don't like speaking about mental, mental health, health issues. So there's like that stigma attached. Right, right. So people will sometimes refer to email or, you know, or, you know, ask questions mm -hmm. virtually. Well, I like that you call it mental health and not mental sickness as yes. such, because I believe that health is, is a, like a total thing. It's your body, it's your body and your soul and your mind. Exactly. So when one of the two isn't working, the other one will also have exactly. a problem in the long run. Exactly. Very nice. I saw some of your columns and you were speaking. There were two topics that really um, were very interesting to me. One was the role of a father, uh -huh. the role a father has to play mm -hmm. when you have children. Um, can you say a little about that? Mm -hmm. Why is it so important? Um, oh, why is the role of the father so important in a child's life as well? Yeah, well, first of all, I guess I got the inspiration coming from my work and being from the Caribbean where a lot of times we see that fathers are absent Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of single mothers mm -hmm. um, so that was the biggest inspiration for that column mm -hmm. um, but apart from that um, it's absolutely vital for um, there to be a paternal figure I mean when I say father it doesn't have to be a biological father mm -hmm. you know anybody can be a sperm donor mm -hmm. but having that paternal figure be it you know a uh, stepfather you know grandfather a paternal figure to have that balance mm -hmm. is necessary in that child's life mm -hmm. um in the case of the girl you know she will she will look to that father figure as somebody she would want to see in her future partner mm -hmm. you know the way uh he treats her father treats her mother mm -hmm. if he treats her with kindness and love she will look to that as, as what she should look for in a future husband. Mm -hmm. And so her father should be her first love. And for the boy, he should look to his father to see the way he treats his mother and how he should in the future treat the woman with respect and love. And so the role is very important. Mm -hmm. So both mother and father play a, a very important role, but especially the father. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the inspiration came because you know, there's so many single mothers and a lot of the problems that we see in the clinic is that a lot of kids, at, at the, you know, they come in as adults, mm -hmm. but when you dig into the childhood, mm -hmm. oh, I, I never had a father or yeah. I never had a father figure. And I believe there are even more persons out there who don't even come into the clinic, but where the absence of a parent, be it the father or the mother, has a very big impact on their lives yeah. and they might not even be aware of it because I believe um, as a grown-up person a lot of our behavior of our behavior patterns have to do 
with things that we witnessed as a child and it goes in our subconscious yes. and then later we behave certain ways and we're not even quite aware that we're behaving a certain way mm -hmm. so um, absolutely and I just wanted to emphasize something my father also being from the Caribbean and him also being absent a lot of the time once I was a child yeah. Um, it actually in Europe and in Germany where I live right now um, there are also a lot of single mothers out there it might not be as as common as mm -hmm. here but I believe that marriages um, first of all seem to get divorced more quickly than yes. they used to like years ago mm -hmm. and also a lot of young people in Germany especially decide not even to get married in the first place and just have children like right, that right. so it's not just a pure caribbean right, thing right. but i do realize that yes. um in the caribbean i think it's more prevalent yes. prevalent yes. right correct okay um so as you said being a father doesn't just mean being a sperm donor exactly. but it, the, the importance is really to be a, a father figure mm -hmm. so it could role. be a uncle who steps in and you know plays the figure of the father mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. shows them the values of how to treat exactly. a woman and so exactly. forth exactly and um, I think also that both parents play a vital role in giving a child self-esteem yes the self-esteem obviously mm -hmm. I think is also a very important <laughs> topic yeah. when it comes later on in life to becoming successful in your career mm -hmm. in your life in relationships mm -hmm. if you don't have a good self-esteem and you love yourself so to speak right. then you will have problems in the long yeah. run yeah. isn't yeah. it yeah absolutely and going back to i mean the childhood is so important mm -hmm. and parents play a vital role and i mean as i said we work with a lot of children and um a lot of times when they come in you know you realize that well of course they're from broken homes there's there's no either maternal figure or paternal figure but more importantly there is no love mm -hmm. so if you have no love how can you show love mm -hmm. right if you've been shown no respect how can you show respect mm -hmm. right um and a lot of times parents it doesn't matter the socioeconomic status mm -hmm. you know it could be somebody um, of a lower so socioeconomic status, somebody wealthy, you know, a lot of times people think that, oh, you know, we send our children to school and teachers, they have to teach everything, you know. 90% of the education of the child, and when I say education, I mean morals, I mean values, comes from the parents. And I also believe that the, um, these values are already, um, are, sometimes my words are missing, but, um, conditioned into the child at a very young age yeah. I think to four five six seven mm -hmm. years that's really where the core values yeah. a child yeah. gets those core values Absolutely. isn't it and it's something that happens at home yes. and not at school or at yes. kindergarten yes. as you yes. say yeah, at home at home yeah. and it's a big mistake that parents make because they think oh you know we're just going to send the child to school and then you know the burden lies on the teacher mm -hmm. but really it's at home mm -hmm. and I think if I were to give parents a key uh, advice mm. it would be for you to you know kind of, as we say in the Caribbean hold one head mm. so if your parents you know you decide that okay this is the way we're going to uh, raise our children mm. you know you must do it uh, hold one head as we say mm. you know um, not that mom says one thing and dad says another thing because then the child grows up respecting one parent more than the other mm. and it's so common you know and I know we blame ourselves as parents but you know, mm. this is what happens. Mm. So if mom says, you know what, bedtime is at 8 o'clock, dad has to agree that bedtime is 8 o'clock, mm. and vice versa. Yes. Daddy says no candy, mommy has to agree with no candy. Otherwise, mm. there's that, right? In Germany, you have a saying, you say you have to pull on one string, so to speak. You have to go in one direction mm -hmm. when it comes to parenting. Mm -hmm. It's not always that easy. It's it can not be always a challenge because when you meet your partner and you eventually have children, it's not the first thing you speak about is how are we going to raise, raise our children. Exactly. So everybody comes from a different background. Exactly. Everybody has maybe a different cultural, parenting. Exactly. And cultural and their own parenting. So sometimes it's something that you have to then exactly. eventually agree on and see how exactly. you can Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's easier said than done, but you have to try exactly you have to try. Right. and then i'm just going back to self-esteem and right. self-confidence mm -hmm. you know just letting that child know that you know they're beautiful mm -hmm. just letting them feel loved 
uh, protected, mm. that in and of itself mm. it boosts self esteem and self confidence. Yeah. You know, just that love and protection, a, a hug, a mm. kiss, you know, spending quality time. You know, a lot of time, and I know especially, I mean, it's, it's, it's globally, and I'm assuming it's mm. even more prevalent in Europe. Mm. You know, we see a lot of kids now, it's, it's the tablet, it's the smartphone, you know, oh, you know, mommy's busy. No. Mm. Hey, even I, I have literally removed Facebook from my phone because I, I decided, you know what, I've been spending way much time on this. I'm not spending enough time with my son. Yeah. I'm there physically, but mentally I'm elsewhere. Yeah. So there's a time you have to set aside, even if it's an hour, mm. you sit and you give them your active attention. Yeah. Right? You have to uh, divide the block some some quality time in your calendar. That's right. For your That's children. Right. right? And make sure so it's not about saying, oh, honey, you're beautiful or you're gorgeous or telling your child that. Actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than love. Giving them that love, that protection, that sense of security that will build their self esteem and their self confidence. Mm -hmm. Now, when people come to you as adults, and I mean, as we know, not everybody comes to a hospital straight away. But is there any advice you can give to the persons watching this? Um, you no, know, persons who have not necessarily received that kind of love and attention as a child, who maybe spent a lot of time alone because yeah. their parents were working or right. making a living. And right. I also wanted to, just to emphasize, I don't think this is about blaming parents because mm -hmm. I think everybody does what they do. Um, because they think it's right. right. It's maybe how they were raised, exactly. it's the values they Absolutely. received as child, children, so they, they basically do their best. Exactly. Everybody tries to do their best, so this is not about blaming, but exactly. if now an adult comes to you who has low self-esteem um, and has a problem looking in the mirror and saying, yeah. oh, I am beautiful, I am yeah. great, and they think, what the hell am I saying here? Yeah. Uh, do you have any advice, any tips you yeah. can give them, e exercises they yeah. can do and that would help them eventually, because I think it's a process, it's mm -hmm. not something that happens mm -hmm. overnight, but gain, gain their self-esteem? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, there's always those cases. Um, and, and I always tell my clients, you know, we, we, we find solutions for our problems, not problems mm -hmm. of problems. So what is it that you like doing? What is it that you enjoy doing? You know, what is it that keeps your mind at ease? You know, maybe, you know, we don't lament about the past, what you right. didn't have. Forget that. Exactly. How do we move forward? What is it that you enjoy? Do you take, you have children? Fine. It's also very important for you to take time away from your children, mm -hmm. to be a better you, to be recharged. Mm -hmm. You enjoy, you know, going for a walk by the sea wall, we have a sea wall again, by the sea, looking at the sea is very therapeutic. Yeah. Um, you know, going to the movies, treating yourself, um, going out with your spouse, with your partner, also that's something that's very important when you are a family. Mm. Just, uh, I'm adding that in because, mm. you know, you're, you, you're, you're a parent mm. and a wife. Um, taking that time for you, but also remembering that it's, it's okay to have me time. Right. It's not selfish. Right. It's okay to have me time. Um, Be because I believe there are well, a lot of times pe persons are being told from the very beginning that taking time for yourself is selfish. Yeah. But it's not. It's self-care. Self -care. Yeah. It's and only, self -care. only if I love myself yes. and that I take time for myself, then I am able then to give love to Absolutely. others. Absolutely. And this right. is the message I try to convey. You cannot expect to be the best mother or the best wife or the best whatever if you don't take care of yourself first. Right. So it's not selfish. It's mm -hmm. called self-care, as you say. Yeah. And healthy practices. Yoga, exercise. And of course, you try to live a healthy lifestyle. You mm -hmm. know, you do some sort of physical exercise. You try to eat well mm -hmm. and do things that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Maybe one last thing, because I know you don't have much time today. <laughs> Your flight is leaving us now, but um, also don't beat yourself up over things. Don't put yourself under too much pressure. Oh, no, I have to start eating healthier. Now I have to exercise. And oh, oh God, and now I have to take time. I don't have time. Don't beat yourself up. Yeah. It's okay sometimes just to say, okay, yeah. things are not working too well right now. But you know what? This is okay exactly. right now. Exactly. Because I think mothers, especially working moms, Put a lot of yeah. pressure on themselves yeah. Yeah. and that makes things even worse yeah. you know yeah. 
So absolutely. be forgiving to yourself sometimes. Absolutely. I think also is important. Yeah, and especially for a woman, I mean, like I say, I always tell mothers, you know, when they say, oh, I'm, I'm a stay-at-home mom, I'm like, listen, you are working. Exactly. Because you are doing, you are looking after your children and you are looking after your home. Mm -hmm. You know, That's I am looking job. after my child and I'm working. Mm -hmm. It's two jobs, mm -hmm. right? So don't be too hard on yourself. Baby steps, as you see. Mm -hmm. You know, little by little, you know. All right. And you, you, I always I always advise my clients, you know what? Bring me, just do a list of, of short-term goals, mm -hmm. mid-term goals, what you'd like to, to see for yourself from now to next three months mm -hmm. and then from three to six months and then you know, six months to two years. Mm -hmm. And then you set your goals and priority. And don't be too hard on yourself. Whatever gets achieved, gets achieved. Exactly. And when you achieve something, acknowledge it and, and celebrate and celebrate, it. celebrate your achievements. Absolutely. Because don't be so eager to have these big, big goals which you hardly exactly. reach. Exactly. And then always be that's disappointed. You, and, and that's, baby steps. And when you reach a small goal. Finally, let me just say, speaking of goals, <laughs> make sure that your goals are realistic. Mm. Goals have to be realistic. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna buy a lottery ticket and, and, and think, oh, I'm gonna win 20 million euros. No, mm -hmm. your goals have to be realistic. And pat yourself on the shoulder exactly. when you achieve something. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for your time. It you're was a welcome, pleasure. You're welcome, Vera. I can give you a hug. <laughs> thank you. It's been you. wonderful. Lovely. I hope that. You know. So now you've even got some Caribbean professional <laughs> advice. <laughs> I hope you've understood my accent. And of course, of course. It's been wonderful. Thank you for interviewing me. Thank you. All right, <laughs> bye. Bye.